Liverpool. Leeds Rhinos are defending their crown. And what a moment for Halifax Rugby League. Oh, oh. Austin is through and Warrington dominating. Ta-da! Great try for the Robins. And as the Giants take the points home. And this it is a full lad. Well, good evening and welcome to the last tackle, the one after the weekend before. And what a weekend it was. It was cracking flags at Wembley Stadium and the Rugby League matched the weather. And I'm joined by a man who would have been feeling pretty smug at about six o'clock on Saturday. Scully, for the first time since 2008, for the first time since your last game, St Helens are Challenge Cup winners. Yeah, it's, it's been a long time coming, hasn't it? And, you know, when I think about it, you know, that last time, was was the last time I played, and that seems like a million years ago now. Um, it's been a long time in between drinks, hasn't it? And, and the Challenge Cup always means so much to St. Helens as well. Um, and you think of the success that we've had over that period, but you know, but there's been no Challenge Cup success. is a uh, is it's, it's quite a, a strange thought to be honest. But we finally, put all that to bed, and uh, yeah, great to see the uh, the guys lifting the lifting the trophy on uh, on Saturday. Does this mean you've got to rewrite a chunk of your after dinner routine now? That <laughs> oh no, I never, I never, uh, I never, I never use that one. No, it's um, it's great to see, isn't it? And like you say, you know, all the success we've had in Super League and and the the Challenge Cup teams to always uh, always avoided us. You know, a couple of defeats in the in the semi finals and obviously the, the loss to Warrington uh, in the final a couple of years ago. It's uh, it's kind of like the monkey off the back now, and you know, hopefully, you know, build on that and build on the successes that you know the, the clubs had in in other comps as well. Well, let's just take a moment to remind ourselves on how they did it. This is the Betfred Challenge Cup final highlights. At the moment, literally and metaphorically, Castleford in the shade at the other end. The ball's kicked out of play. The wait is over for one of them for the first time in 13 years. St. Helens are Challenge Cup winners. It is the 13th time in total that they get that accolade. The 2021 Betfred Challenge Cup winners, St. Helens! Scully, the scoreline will look a lot more comfortable than the actual performance in a lot of ways because for the first 40 minutes, Cast were probably on top of that game. Yeah, they were. Yeah, it was uh, maybe a great first half, wasn't it? From from Castleford, um, you know, and, and they, they, really, they really rattled Saints, I think. Um, but you could see, you know, the, the effort that Cast put in. Certainly, I mean, obviously, we were down at Wembley. It was the, the weather was stifling, wasn't it? And I mean, you can't imagine what it was like for the for the players out there on the on the pitch. Well, I was I was pitch side towards the end and. You know, I'm not lying when I say that I've been in Florida in August and not felt that hot. It was a crazy temperature down there. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the weather forecast for that for for that Saturday was always going to be, you know, blazing sunshine, and and it certainly didn't disappoint. Um, thankfully for us, in the stand in the shade with a beer in your hand, it was a, it was a bit easier. But I think it was always going to take its toll on Castleford. I think the Saints were clear favourites going into the game. We know that, and I think it was it was it was it had to be an almighty effort from from Castleford to to win the game. And I think they, they probably used a lot of that in that in that first forty minutes. It was an exceptional forty minutes from from Cass, and rightly so deserved to go in at uh, at twelve six at half time. Yeah, I just felt watching it that maybe Cass sped the game up on purpose in the first half to try and get on top and try and play some of that attacking rugby, but weren't quite able to to turn that into as many points as they'd like, and then probably paid for that a little bit in the second half and, and say yeah. you know how good they are with the game management. Yeah, definitely. It was definitely always always going to be, I think, a tactic that Castleford were going to use. They're going to throw the ball about, they're going to use that pace, that strike. You know, we've seen obviously he got he got the Lance Sodnay levels, you know, he's a he's a great strike player. Um and I think that was the way that they were going to beat Saints. What what you get with that is 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 when you start fatiguing and you start making errors in in trying to throw that ball about and you you know, you're not winning field position then, or you, you're spending your time defending in them conditions. And as soon as Saints hit you, they've done it for years. As soon as it, you know they get on top, it's it's a difficult you know juggernaut to stop. And, and I think that's what happened in the in the second half. As, as Castleford fatigued and and Saints got that bit of momentum, um, you know, it was uh, I think it was only going one way. 
Well, we've mentioned the conditions, but let's hear now from a man who could probably play a full 80 in the Sahara Desert. James Roby was outstanding again, and here he is post-match. James, considering everything this group has achieved, it would have been an absolute disaster, wouldn't it, if you'd not won a Challenge Cup together? Yeah, well, not about disaster, but yeah, it would have been obviously really disappointing. I think we put ourselves in a very strong position, and uh, we know we've, we've been involved in a, a good number of big games over the last couple of years, so... You know, we, we, it was an achievement in itself, really, to get here, but obviously we wanted to get over the line and get the job done, and obviously, lucky enough, we got that done today, you know, in really hard conditions against tough opposition. Yeah, it was a fast game, and we're playing it in about a million degrees here. Just how tough was it out there? Really tough, mate, yeah, really. The, that heat, you know, there's no escape for it, and I, I think you could tell that watching the game in the second half, the amount of stoppages and players going down, and... Yeah, it was, you know, it's, it's challenging, but at the end of the day, it's the same for both teams and we've just got to crack on and, and get on with it. And luckily, we hang in there today and, you know, I'm really proud of this team we've got. Do you think the experience and the battle scars from the two grand finals helped you out kind of in that last 20 minutes or yeah, so? Yeah, I'd like to think so, yeah. I think uh, any time you're playing a big game, it's, it's definitely good experience for you. It's a learning curve and something you can fall back on. And obviously, we spoke about that in the week, spoke about, you know, how we want to approach the game, how we want to go about our business and... Obviously, you know, I don't think we played the best in parts, but we're not bothered. We've got the cup. You know, that's all that matters. How special was the crowd and the atmosphere? Because it was tasty, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely, yeah. And the atmosphere, we've, obviously, we've had no fans and then we've had the 4,000. Uh, to get the 40, whatever we had today, was amazing. You know, this stadium just has, you know, it, it's like on its own. It's, the, the atmosphere it creates is unbelievable. And, uh, you know, with the weather and all that, and the, the feel-good factor of everyone getting out because of COVID and stuff, you know, what an occasion, and we're just really proud that we can share this with, with the fans. And it, you have to wait a while to win it again, but do you think one might follow another now you've got it out of the way? Oh, I'd like to think so, but, you know, there's a, a lot of good teams in this competition, a lot of tough games to come, and, you know, we'll just have to take it week by week. We'll obviously enjoy ourselves tonight, but, um, you know, there's, there's other trophies to be won. Well, make sure you do enjoy it, mate. Congratulations. Cheers, Thank you. Scully James Roby, we sing his praises a lot on this show, but he was outstanding again, wasn't he? It was, wasn't he? You know, we you, you just get it gets boring, doesn't it? Talking and praising James Roby because he, you know, I was talking to somebody after the game and I said, you know, tell me the last time that James Roby didn't have a, a, a an eight, nine, ten out of ten. You know, that's what he does. And you know, big big players play on the big stage, and and James certainly did a lot. You know, he he had a real, a real captain's knock, I thought, on on Saturday. You know, obviously he scored the try that that. Got Saints back into the game, you know, following that that break at half time, but it's just his his leadership, his you know his, his work ethic and and everything, the quality that comes off it. You know, when you when you look at the the amount of runs that he does, you know, the amount of defending he does, to still do the quality, you know, that that it, could, that it, it turns out as well, and he's just such an inspirational character, isn't he? And and, and other players feed off that. I thought one of the big differences as well in that kind of. 50 minute through to maybe 65 period of the game was that players like James Roby, but also, you know, a few others, Amor, Wormsley, Lomax. I mean, the list goes on. They almost, I think the difference perhaps from the final against Warrington a couple of years ago is that Saints just went into that kind of muscle memory of the 2019 grand final and the 2020 grand final and just seemed to manage their way through it. Yeah. And, and it's something we spoke about, didn't we? The, the, the previous week on the show you know there was, there was going to be two players that were going to be key for both sides Paul McShane and James Roby but we said for them two to be key in in this game you've got to play on the back of that pack and in that period that you spoke about there you know the Saints pack got on top and allowed James Roby to to do what he does best and that and that's jump you know from dummy half leave, leave markers on the floor and cause teams problems and and that's what he does and, and that's when Saints are at the best you know it doesn't have to be shifting the ball all the time I think, you know, when they're very, very clinical, the field position, I thought Lachlan Coote was outstanding as well. You know, his, his game management, just his calmness under pressure, his kicking game, you know, turning Castleford around when, you know, when big fellas don't want to have to get back behind the ball, you know, and bring the ball out of their own half, you know, that that's that's smart game management. We've said it a couple of times, haven't we, the last few weeks, and I've spoken to you, but the more and more I think about it, and a Saturday prime example, Lachlan Coote going to Hull KR can only be a financial decision, can't it? Yeah, it can. It can, and and, and we, we we understand that. You know, it's been a, it's been a, a, a crazy you know two years, and no doubt every club is is financially you know hit by it. And and don't forget, Saints have have got 
you know, you look at young Jack Wellsby as well. He's a, he, he was another one that, that that stood up on the big stage, didn't he? It just it keeps increasing that that profile and outstanding. And just his, his development as a as a player. Now, you've got to invest in these kids because you know he's he's the, he's the next Saint success for for the next 10, 12 years, and you've got to invest in them. So that there's a there's a financial burden there as well. So. Unfortunately, not everything fits in into into that one pie, and um, sometimes then tough decisions have to be made. But you know, it's a tough decision for Lachlan as well, and he's got to look after himself and his family. You know, he's coming to the back end of his, his career, and uh, but you know that that's for next year, and uh, he certainly seems focused on on doing everything he can to uh, to lead Saints to uh, to as much silverware as he can. Hey, it's crazy to say this because he's so young, but Jack Wellsby. I think when he came on, Saints shifted in the beginning, and he just seems to be getting better and better. And he's obviously learning from some of those experienced heads around him, but he's just turning into such a top, top player, isn't he? He's, he's just, he looks so comfortable now, doesn't he? And I think that's the thing. He's, he's obviously comfortable around the players. He's, he's got that, you know, that experience now. He's played, a, a, you know, a lot of games. And he's just a player. I don't know whether you could give him too much structure or shape and that, just let him play because what he does best is, is a running game. You know, you see that for the try for Tommy Makinson. Just let him go and play. Uh, and I mean, it's still to be seen where, where, where he will end up. You know, what is his, his, his best position? Um, but put the ball in his hand and it'll cause you problems. He reminds me a little bit of, of John Bateman, not in terms of playing style particularly or, or position, but just in terms of through sheer attitude and determination and enthusiasm alone, he just seems to cause problems because he's everywhere. Yeah, he's very much like Batty. You know, I think the, the way he's built, the way he runs, you know, he likes to run cross field and, and dodge in and out of, of, of players and, and and naturally strong, you know, certainly a lot stronger, like, like John is, certainly a lot stronger than he looks and, and, and the what he weighs. Um, but you know, Jack, he's got he's got the pace, he's, he's got the agility, but he's got the skill as well. You know, he's he's got he's got a fullbacks running game. You know, he's got the, the pace of a of a centre winger, um, but he's got the hands of a halfback as well. You know, he can pick the pass. He picked it for for Tommy for that try, and, and it's just great when you've got so many facets to your to your game. You know, and you can play numerous positions. And for that group as well, they've won everything in the last few years, of course, apart from this one, the one that got away for so many years. But I, I think they'll probably play it down a little bit. But for some players in that team, it would have felt very incomplete at the end of this season if, if it hadn't come back to St. Helens this year. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because I think they know they're the best team in the competition. And, you know, when you don't win, you, you feel like it's only down to yourself and, and your own performances. Um, and I think you could see that. I think you see some of the, the players' interviews after after the game, you know, like to Kyle Moore and, and, and um, LMS. You know, they really, really enjoyed that moment. And I think it was a big, big relief that, you know, 13 years is a long time for a club like St. Helens not to, not to win a Challenge Cup final. So I think, as you said, that, that one's gone now and um, hopefully build on it. Yeah, you mentioned... LMS, I spoke to Louis after the game, and he's—I mean—he's always bouncing off the walls, isn't it? But but you could tell just how much that one meant to him. I think that was a—you know—an extra special win, especially for him being a being from that part of the world as well. Wembley would have always, I think, had extra meaning. Yeah, it will do. You know, Louis loves going back to to London, and certainly Wembley. He wouldn't like love going back to Wembley, but I thought he was outstanding as well, Louis. You know, he, he did what he did best. You know, he just runs the ball hard. He's he takes some stopping. He's very, very mobile. You know, I thought it was a bit more clinical with his performance in regards to errors and 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 you know we, we know he can give the odd penalty away. You know, with a bit of indiscipline. Um, but I thought it was I thought it was outstanding on Saturday. It's probably the area actually that, in some respects, the Saints impressed me most. Certainly in that second half, is that they just gave nothing away, did they? That was a real you know, stranglehold. I mean, in the respect that they just they didn't open the door with a penalty or a, a knock on or at any point in the scene. No, no, that that was it. And when you're doing that on the front foot, you know, you tend to give penalties and, and errors away when you're fatiguing. You know, when you're in control of the game, when you're winning field position. I spoke I spoke about Kuti, you know, with his with his kicking game. When you do that and you're on the front foot and you're turning the opposition around, you know, and, and when you're fatigued, trying to bring that ball out of your twenty, you know, and you're not asking questions of the of the, of the opposition defence because. You know, bodies are not in in position, or you know, you you're fatigued as well. It's it's tough to turn that around. And and Saints were, you know, 
are the best in the in the business at, at turning that screw and, and being ruthless and and playing clinical. You know when they're on that front foot. When we talk about the best sides in the in the modern era, the Super League era, I guess is a good cut off point. We we talk about I mean your Saints team in two thousand and six, treble winners, the Leeds team, the treble winners in two thousand and fifteen. Where do you think this current crop of St. Helens players fits in that list? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's, it's obviously it's right up there, you know. And you look at what you know they, they're going now for the for the third title in a row, and, and you know the Betfred Super League. Um, I think you can only you can only relate that team into the into the current era of of what they're up against as as well. But obviously, Saints, you know, a, a fantastic team, and for me, clearly the, the the best team and the most consistent team in in the Super League at the moment. A few other bits of news in the rugby league world this week. Uh, fantastic signing for Leeds. We've we've mentioned him a few times, but Aidan Seas will be heading early next season. A massive loss for Huddersfield. A fantastic coup for for Leeds Rhinos. And that partnership already between him and Luke Gale is going to be two of the sharpest rugby league brains in the league, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You know, it's a big signing for Leeds, isn't it? You know, they've obviously you know invested into that into that decision. Um, so he's a Huddersfield will be disappointed to, to lose him because he's been key for them, hasn't he, for for a number of years now. And yeah, a big uh, big signing for Leeds. You know, they've got some uh, they're putting a decent squad together. Leeds, they've got a lot of you know good up and coming young players. Uh, for me, you know, Mikolai Ledsky, the, the young young prop. Obviously, I've worked with Mikolai at, at England. You know, he's one of the he's turned out to be one of the best in the business in in that position. And you know, Leeds will be be looking now to to build. You know, they had a, a great era, didn't they? You know, through through JP and Kev and, and all that. And then that, that transition come in and they're already looking now to, to build for that for that next 10 years. So, yeah, I mean, Seas is a, he's a big, he's got a lot of experience, hasn't he? And, and again, to help these younger players come through. And a triple signing announced by Wigan as well this week. Two young lads from the NRL will be looking to come over and prove themselves. And then Abbas Miski from London Broncos, who's been an absolute machine for the the London club in the championship, a, a great try scoring rate. It's an interesting one, Wigan, because obviously they're losing Jackson Hastings, they're losing Gildart. You know, they've, they've lost Bevan French for the duration of this season now. We'll see what kind of shape he comes back in. But they're not really a team that you ever see go through a rebuilding phase, are they, Wigan? It's almost like a constant a cycle of, of top players coming through. But this is going to be an interesting probably 12, 18 months. Yeah, it is, and uh, you know, I've seen a lot of the feedback, um, a lot of the feedback from from the Wigan fans on them them three signings yesterday, and it seemed, you know, quite positive. And I think the, the Wigan fans were, were were certainly happy to see something happening. You know, obviously, it's been a tough year for them. I think they've they've relied on a lot of the young players coming through. For for me, a lot of the young players who, who are not ready for that level yet, um, but they were next in line. Um, so Wigan, you know they've they've always been up there, haven't they? They're always ones who, who compete for for silverware, and I'm sure the Wigan fans and the Wigan club now will be will be happy that there's there's three good signings there already in the bank for for next year. Like you say, they, they get Bevan French back, who's been a, a massive loss for them, uh, and they'll certainly be stronger for, for for next year on the back of that. Well, just before we wrap up, Scully, I mean, this was always. Well, it's clearly now is developing into quite a, a disrupted season in terms of COVID and there was always a, a, a likelihood that that would happen. But at the same time, the, the Chance Cup being in July pr- provides quite a nice line in the sand almost at the kind of halfway stage of the season. And it is hot enough to be quite an interesting one. We always knew Wigan and Saints were, were going to do well, but Catalans have thrown a real kind of spanner in the works and are, are looking very strong and I still think there's a lot more to come from from Hull FC and Castleford and I mean Warrington who knows they can certainly turn it on I wouldn't rule them out being there or thereabouts at the end of the season but equally I, you know it, I wouldn't put my mortgage on it it's yeah. quite an interesting time this isn't it as we build into what will become you know the back end of the season and playoffs yeah, it certainly is, and and Catalan. I don't think Catalan's a shock to anybody to be to be leading Super League. You know, I think they're a they're a club that we've spoke about for for a number of years. That question has always been consistency, hasn't it? Though of of whether they can be consistent and really, really back themselves to be to be champions. You know, do they believe it? Do they believe that they could do that? And I think they do now. And I think you look at the, some of the players. You know that they've got. We speak about them all the time. You know, your, your James Malone, your Sam Tompkins. Them kind of, of players who are experienced and and, and have, have played in big games and, and won things within the game. And I think Catalan are, are, are really 
growing in confidence as, as the season goes on and, and see themselves at the top of the table and, and would back themselves to go all the way. So Catalan are definitely going to be in the mix come uh, final time, I think, at the end of the year. Obviously, Saints, you know, very much the same. All FC Warrington, you don't know what you're going to get week to week, but we know that on their day, they're, again, capable of beating anybody. Well, Scully, thank you for joining us. One piece of silverware in the bag. It's at St. Ellen's as a league leader's shield on the Betfred Super League trophy to come, of course. It is going to be a fascinating end to the season. We'll be back more with next week from the last tackle. Thank <laughs> you.